Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Child and Family Services, the Black History Month speaker series, Buffalo Influencers, Past, Present, and Future. My name is Chantel Thompson. I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here at Child and Family Services, and we are so excited to have you here with us for week two with our guest speaker, Mr. Lindsay Taylor. He is the curator and founder of Both Louvre Music and Arts Festival. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Mr. Taylor and then we're gonna jump right in. So Lindsay Taylor, a native of Buffalo, New York, graduate from Sweet Home High School and attendee of Buffalo State College for undergraduate studies in business marketing. Many recognize him as a renowned businessman in the pillars of real estate, education, sports and entertainment. His journey began in high school as an athlete where he was a three sport athlete. Taylor maintained success in academics, which allowed him to receive the New York State Scholar Athlete Award and other academic scholarships. Taylor entered Buffalo State College in 2006, instantly becoming active on campus and organizations. Um, during these years, he was the president of the student Buffalo, I'm sorry, the student union board and the host of the radio show 91.3 WBNY. Being involved in campus life gave him the opportunity to build a network that he cherishes for much of his business success. During the spring of 2017, at the age of 19, he started his first business crown entertainment and promotions. Developing rapidly, the company became one of the leading marketing and event planning brands across the United States. Over the past 15 years, Taylor has been able to launch many successful sports and entertainment brands, along with successful partnerships with Fortune 500 companies, higher education, local school boards, and small businesses, community, organiza community organizations, elected officials, and more. Taylor strives to be unique and trendsetting in its industry with bridging the gap between generations, community, and businesses, and breaking culture barriers. Lindsay's success and vision enabled him to start several prominent businesses with an international reach, such as both Louvre Music and Arts Festival, Balling for a Cause Inc., Queen City Classic Basketball League, Goals Premier Cup, and Lindsay Taylor Real Estate. He devotes much of his time investing in the local community with BFAC Big Four Initiative, which services over 4,000 youth annually through educational, youth, sports, health, and community giving programs. He serves as a mentor to many students in Western New York. He's a current board member of the Plymouth Crossroads and Fillmore Forward. He's a proud father, girl dad, and devoted family member. And Lindsay has received numerous awards, way too many to list. We are so excited to have him. It's such a pleasure and an honor. He's done some really great things in the community. Today, we're going to really spend our focus talking about what's going on with both Lube. We know that it's new to many of you. Um, so we're just really excited to tell you what's going on with that. Um, in just a minute, I'm going to queue up this video to share with you. Um, and then we will jump into our conversation with Mr. Taylor. How y'all doing? This is Lindsay Taylor from Bold Flow Music and I'm the founder and CEO. Um, I just kind of want to give you guys a quick background on what Old Flow is all about. Um, many of you may have heard of us through our festival. Um, if you not have heard of us, it's a great opportunity to learn more about us as we are venturing into our fifth year and our fifth celebration. So we want to make sure everybody's on board of what Old Flow is all about and our impact in the music and arts and culture community. So Old Flow, we kicked off in 2017. Uh, we actually were working on this for three years since 2014. And really what it was, I've been involved in the sports and entertainment business uh, for about 15 years. And I wanted to bring an event and a festival here to the area that really celebrated the music, arts, and culture of our community here in Western New York. And if we look across the landscape, um, Buffalo has a great and rich history of music, arts, and culture. So while we are celebrating that history, we also want to bring light and celebrate the resurgence that is coming of the new generation of artists, curators, and musicians coming right out of here out of this area. So one of our biggest pillars is diversity. And we stand on that and we believe in that because it represents what West New York is all about. We're a very diverse community, so we want to represent that and what we have in our lineup for our musicians and our artists, our participants. So you'll see that Oflo has featured some of the best performers that not only West New York has seen, our country, and also internationally. We have some great headliners that have graced our stage over the past five years, such as Benny the Butcher, Benzella Joy, Curtis Lavelle, 
and Zuri Appleby have been some of our recent headliners. Our sites have always been unique. Um, in 2014, when we first were planning the festival, um, we really were trying to figure out where we wanted to do it at. And we landed on, you know, places like Silo City, which has a historic value to Buffalo and Western York, and not just Buffalo and Western York, but, you know, to, to, to the economic boom that happened in much of America. And, you know, we had the pleasure where the Central Terminal actually reached out and they offered us the opportunity to host our fifth year here. It was a no-brainer, you know, because this would truly be a first of its kind to have an event like this held here. You know, Buffalo, the main event is the festival. And, it, and, we, and we know that, we love that. But we really want people to understand and people really see that it's more than just a festival. It's a brand. And it's a Buffalo-born brand that's going to reach, you know, nationally, internationally. Um, I've done that successfully with other businesses um, and other brands. But Buffalo is something really unique and really special um, that's coming out of Buffalo, West New York. Buffalo is more than just a one-day festival. We pride ourselves with truly being involved in our culture and also truly being engraved in our community. And we do those through a variety of different measures. One being the Buffalo Foundation, which services inner city youth from music and arts programs. Flowwear, which is our lifestyle and merchandise brand. And Arts and Beats, which is our monthly First Friday concert series. So the Buffalo Foundation, um, is in place of what we have seen a lack of in our education system. We see music and arts programs being taken away from our youth in the school system. Um, so we wanted to replace that by providing after school programs and then programs within the school system provided by us through artists and partnerships. So we did many of these things um, in our inner cities, um, ages five to 22. Also we provide internships, paid internships for, for students in the city of Buffalo. We have a variety of charitable events our main one being our sneaker ball, the flow, which is our multimedia platform, which is an artist tribune, which artists be able to tell their stories, how they want to tell them in a in variety of different ways. Also with our foundation is that we have our Bluffo Music Arts Center, which we're currently on a campaign to create a multi-use facility that will curate music and arts right here in Western New York. If your company is looking to associate themselves with the organization and brand that is community engaged, culturally activated and providing a platform for all artists and creatives to express their art. Both flow music and arts is a partnership you want to have. Thank you so much. So I'm excited to have this conversation um, because both food is personally. Sorry about that. Uh, the YouTube mm -hmm. just wants to keep going. Um, both Move is one of my personal favorite events of the year. And what I think is really cool is I'm a grown up, but Both Move is also my son's favorite event of the year. Um, and so that really gives you an idea of how inclusive and expansive and how it speaks across generations. Um, and so I'm really just excited to share with our listening audience, our child and family services audience to tell them more about this awesome event. Also forgot to mention, Lindsay, before we jump in, one of the artists that you were listening to um, as everybody was in the waiting room was Curtis Lavelle. And she's a regular um, at Both Louvre. And you were listening to her song, um, and you can check out her album across all listening platforms. So let's jump into it. Lindsay, we, we wanna have a conversation today. Um, we didn't wanna set it up with just doing like a, a, a speaker style where you um, just spoke freely, but we had some, some really right. particular questions that people wanted to hear um, answered. And at the end of this, we'll let our listening audience chime in with additional questions if they have any. So first thing we wanna know, how do you define, I know we heard a little bit in the video, but how do you define both Louvre Music and Arts Festival? <clears throat> I define it just as I, as I said it in the video, um, culturally activated, community engaged. And what we really want to do is, and what we really do is uh, stand on the platforms of diversity. And, you know, both Louvre, when, when, you, when you come out to the event, you want to see diversity throughout the entire festival from our lineup, um, from literally, you could be watching a gospel artist and a go to a country artist to a hip hop artist to somebody playing jazz to rock and roll. And the purpose of that is because when you come into when you 
go to most events, it's all run genre music and it's all just one representation. But when you can mix, be essentially a melting pot of different genres of music, different mediums of art, you'll have that demographic come out and intermingle, become fans of each other um, and, and learn from each other. So um, diversity is huge for us. Um, being culturally activated is huge for us, not only in the music and arts, uh, but also the Western Europe culture. Uh, we, we love partner, partnering with um, culture-based businesses and, 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 and small businesses that represent Buffalo um, and being community engaged uh, with our youth and with our artists and our partnerships. So that's what it really is. I love it. So we know you're going into year five with this festival. Um, thinking back to 2016, or I would imagine even before that, before the first official event, <laughs> what was the initial inspiration behind creating this festival? So we officially launched Bow Flow um, in the summer of 2017, um, which would be its fifth year coming this year. Um, but three years prior to that was when like the actual ince uh, inception happened, like where, you know, I was just sit, I was just, it was like in the springtime, it was like March or April, pretty much around this time. I'm like, you know, I would love to create um, a festival uh, that you would see pretty much across other parts of the country and have it here. And it was, you know, at, at first, it was like, you know, one of those festivals where, you know, you have all this, you know, this huge lineup of all these nationally ranked artists. And then I just thought about it. I'm like, you know what? Instead of going that route, we actually have national, international, uh, renowned artists and musicians right here from Buffalo. And even at that time, we have a resurgence of musicians and artists that were starting to come up. And so it was like, you know, let's represent Western York and Buffalo in this way. So then now, when, as these artists begin to continue to um, climb in their own careers, that they circle this date and say, you know what, we want to go back and, 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 and represent um, in our hometown, in our festival. Um, and you see, um, and you know, since, since we've done that, you know, you, you'll see some other representations that where artists really cherish an event that represents their hometown, the Roots Picnic, um, which you have a lot of, you know, Philadelphia artists come back for that festival, you know, at one time, the OVO Festival, in which, you know, Drake is, you know, that Toronto based artist and he, you know, celebrates his Canadian and Toronto culture. So, you know, not mimicking anything that they're doing, but, you know, there's similarities to like, hey, we want to represent and celebrate Buffalo. Yeah, we want people to come in from out of town. We want, you know, artists to come in from out of town, but know that the true basis is, is, is uh, Buffalo culture and Western New York culture. I love it. And I think it's so timely, um, especially with a lot of local artists um, being called to major stages. Um, so we're excited to have our own platform to welcome them back home. So this is awesome that you are kind of blazing the trail for that opportunity. Um, I know my personal favorite part about Bo Flu is every year, you know, either at one of the monthly events or either at the final event, I'm taking home a piece of original art from a local artist to hang on my wall. Um, and the right. list goes on of all the awesome people, AJ and Idris Wajid, right. <laughs> always grabbing something every year to add to the collection. My son's favorite part is the silent disco and they dance all night. So <laughs> what's your favorite part of the festival? My favorite part is what the people's favorite, <laughs> favorite part of it is, is <clears throat> there's a couple of things like one, uh, we do call, call it a fan favorite. Um, it's a silent disco. Everybody, you know, everybody enjoys it. Um, it's something that's really unique that, you know, we have three different DJs um, going on at the same time and they're all uh, playing different styles of music. So I remember the first year um, when we did it, you know, we had like one group of people like line dancing. And then, you know, we had another group of people just like getting all crazy with another people like, you know, two. So it was like, it was all these three different dances going at the same time, but everybody's enjoying the time in the same space. So, you know, for me, that's, that's, that's always fun to see because, you know, you hear people, you know, rapping or singing lyrics or singing songs and you can't hear the music, <laughs> you, know, and, you know, who knows the song, who really don't know the song. So that, that's always a favorite part. Um, and then even like, you know, for me, you know, we do a, a really good due diligence of the artists that, you know, that we put on um, but to really see them perform and always walk away with, you know, a surprise act and, and, what, I, and what we try to tell um, the musicians is like, you know, don't, uh, here's my saying, I should, I should say, I should say, we, don't treat it like a gig, treat it like a show. 
you know, um, because, you know, if you treat it like a gig, it's like, you know, you're going to a tavern or a bar and you're just playing in front of a, a, a small crowd or whatever have you. Treat it like it's a show. Treat it like you're in Key Bake Arena. Treat it like you're at, at Darien Lake. And I guarantee you it's, 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 it's going to go fire for you. So every year, you know, we always have that, you know, everybody performs really great, but you always have that one act that just like sticks out, you know. Yeah. Um, so, th- so for me, it's just like, you know, who's going to be like the surprise, the dark horse that's going to come out and just shock everybody? the whole crowd with with their performance. Yeah, I think one of the really cool things about the event is we always walk away like being put on to somebody that we never heard of before, somebody Mm -hmm. that stands out, somebody to add to your playlist, or like I said, um, a new artist to put on your wall or a cool (laughs) t-shirt to wear. Um, It's always somebody new that we get a chance to learn about. So five years in, obviously the event grows bigger and bigger every year. Mm-hmm. This cannot happen as a one-man show. Tell us about your team. How do you guys make this happen? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> absolutely not. So uh, my team represents what we want to see at the event. So um, even though that, you know, you'll see me be the spokesperson in front of the camera, you know, a lot of times, <laughs> but my team is, is what we speak and what we preach is diversity. So we have men, we have women, we have African-Americans, we have Latinos, we have you know, uh, people of European descent, you know, people of, you know, of African descent, uh, we, we have, we have it all. Um, and, and the reason why we do that is because I, you know, I grew up in a diverse settings. Uh, and if I want to, you know, preach diversity, you know, it has to show amongst my team. And, and if it shows amongst my team, then it's just going to be show amongst, you know, people that we're trying to have to come out. Yeah, definitely. And it is a true reflection. Um, the event is probably one of the most, most diverse events that I've attended. Um, in Buffalo. So with that, um, we saw the video, folks had a chance to see clips of some of the artists that perform. Um, Tell us about some of the the artists that you've had in the past or who people might expect to see coming to the stage or um, whose artwork they might expect to view. Um, Give us us a little taste of that. Right, so artists in the past, actually I got a few of them back. Let me see where I can start at. So artists in the past, we actually had this pretty dope thing uh, done. so these are little Funkos that was created by, by, by <laughs> Love Lovely, created by Ange. So this is actually Vanzella Joy. Um, she was the first artist that headlined our tour. She actually uh, performs for Beyonce. She's Beyonce's tour drummer. So when Beyonce was here, was it two summers ago at the Bill Stadium? She was right behind Beyonce. The second year, um, and this is probably one of the, the, you know, the bigger artists that are coming out of Buffalo is Benny the Butcher. Benny the Butcher is signed to Rock Nation um, and with Jay-Z. So I always tell Benny stories because Benny was, you know, already on his climax to being a, a, a nationally renowned artist. But literally three, four months after he performed at our festival, he was signing, he was signing with Rock Nation and Jay-Z. So that's the thing with, with both flows where, you know, you're not just coming to see, you know, local artists perform, but you're actually coming, you know, you may be seeing the next Benny the Butcher, you may be seeing the next Jay-Z. And then, uh, the third year, which was Curtis Lavelle, who's, who most of you already heard um, previous before that, uh, really great artist, uh, tremendous. And then uh, Zuri Appleby, uh, she has uh, been a bad set for um, just recently, uh, Adam Lambert. Um, she's been on tour with uh, several different artists. Usher was one, <laughs> was one of them. He's been so, on a lot. Um, uh, you know, yeah, she's, 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 she's been on tour a lot. So um, those are our four artists that, that have, uh, Grace, well, our four uh, closing out headlining artists have graced, but each and every year, um, you know, we, we have at least minimally uh, 30 performing acts on, on, on multiple different stages. Um, we have a <clears throat> minimum of like 20 exhibiting artists. Um, so you'll see more from Jarrell Adams to Tyshawn Tyson to AJ Smith to Stephanie Lee um, to Jay Skis to Seeing Sounds um, to uh, Kind of Shadowrun uh, to um, kid with the wings. I'm looking at some of the paintings in, in here right now. Um, Peter Ponce, uh, Vinny El, uh, Alejandro. So, um, and I know I'm, I'm missing, I'm missing um, some Why people. Don't you but... tell, us, tell us about, um, cause so both of us are wearing the Bofu merch. Uh, you see the logo here. Tell us about the local artists that designed these. <clears throat> yeah, so this is a part of our, 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 our flow wear. And what the flow wear uh, concept is that we partner with artists um, to create merchandise, uh, lifestyle merchandise. So, um, this artist right here is uh, <laughs> Emeka Wajid. Emeka Wajid is a young artist um, that is that's really uh, transcending 
Um, he's really ahead of his time, and he's the son of Adris Waji, um, who is a phenomenal artist. Uh, everybody should. <laughs> yeah. if, you don't, if you don't know Adris Waji, you, you, you should. So the whole, Mecca, family. Um, the whole family. Yeah, yeah, the whole, the whole <laughs> family is just, just, just incredible. Um, so uh, we put out a call, wanted to create a, a, a line. Uh, he put it He put it together. He submitted it. Um, we paid a commission for it. And we created a really, really dope line. It's some of the hoodies that we done. We had done T-shirts over over this uh, summer. So that's one of the things we, we're partnering with artists uh, to create this. So we have some more pieces that are going to come out. So this, so, so to us, you know, yes, yeah, it's more than just a fashion, but it's also artwork. You know, the detail like that. that we want to go into it, the the quality. So we have some more pieces that are, are going to come out um, in the spring. I love that. Um... So it's Black History Month, right? That's why you're here today. Um, and we are talking about past, present, and future. You representing one of the folks that are really making history right now, like in real time. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've had as a Black man with curating um, events at this level in Western New York? It's, it's, it's tough. And it's honestly a conversation <laughs> that I'm having now. Um, with 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 people in 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 the, in the corporate sector and so forth, um, because it is, um, I would say, in the festival space, um, I've been in you know sports and in other entertainment space, but in the festival space, um, I'm one. I'm the I'm the only in, in in the actual festival space that that's that's black. Well, I should say there's there's two myself and Marnetta, Marnetta Mal Malcolm. Um, so it's, I'm one of the only that are actually doing actual music festival um uh, in, in the entire west new york and there's a plethora of them right um but we have you know we have other you know um concert promoters who do great jobs um and, and, and large event promoters but in that festival space so for, for me it's really i think one of the biggest challenges is you know when i first got into uh, this new realm because it was it was new for me as, as well because i was doing a lot of you know concerts and nightlife events and, and sporting events and so forth like that. So this was unique because I knew it had to be unique and I didn't want the event to attach to Lindsay out the gate. I wanted people to see the actual concept of the event first. So um, when first, you know, presenting the event to the public, you know, I intentionally hid behind the scenes because one of the things that, that I hid behind the scenes was because, you know, what, what we tend to see is that uh, events curated by not only black men, but just uh, African Americans in general can get labeled very quickly. Um, and, you know, if I'm saying I'm doing a festival, it automatically gets labeled as a hip hop or R&B event, right? Um, so I wanted people to see the concept of what we're trying to do, diversity and, and, and how we want the stages to flow and the concept of the event. Um, and then I would actually say like, you know, my team and others were the ones that like, kind of like, you know, pushing on, no, you need to, you know, be on the forefront is because people need to see that you're doing it. And I would see that the events, you know, when people walk up like, you don't want us behind this event. And, you know, people would actually say that because they didn't know who was like, you know, the, the front person or, you know, the person that was really leading the charge. So, you know, that was one of the things is like, you know, uh, is, 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 is that factor right there. And, and I'm really saying that plays into a lot of different things from um, initial support, uh, <clears throat> because these, these events cost a lot and and we're talking about sponsorships you talk about donations and so forth like that um i have seen and i've seen in other, other sectors that um you know support initially for african-american led events are minimum compared to to other led events so um that initial support so we have to be you know five years in to get that to start to see some type of real Hey, here's how we we could you know try to support you, and still even then you know it's still you know we're still kind of a little bit behind, but you know we, we have to be grateful of that. Um, yeah. So 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 you so you see that, um, but really outside of that, you know, it, we, we, I think we're in a place now um, with, with with society where you know society is is, in, is you know trying to get behind African American or Black or Brown led um, platforms and movements um, and. I'm holding them to the gun on that um, because obviously we've seen <laughs> we've seen a lot of uh, organizations and, and companies and corporations and businesses and so forth come out, you know, this past late spring and early summer saying, you know, how they, you know, want to push their diversity initiative and how they want to, you know, get behind these black and brown um, platforms. So 
make the statement, but really back it up. So, yeah. you know, um, so that's, that's really where it's sad is the, you know, so, you know, and, 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 and back it up in a meaningful way, you know, don't just say, Hey, we want to get behind something and, you know, you, and then not just for me, but just, you know, let's throw them a couple peanuts and make them happy. Cause you know, whatever, no, get behind them. Cause I know what Bofflo was doing and the real impact of what Bofflo was doing. Um, not only for musician artists, but for community and creating memories for people who want to come, you know, like how you stated people come to this event to, to meet other new people and, and, and expand their minds. So I, I know the true impact. So yes, you may look for events to get behind a hack, 10, 15, 20,000 people, but what's the real impact that's really having on the community? You know, what are they yeah. really doing? Are they just setting up shop for one day and, and going away? Or are they really entrenched in the community, getting inside these schools and trying to create more, more, more memories and more, and more uh, engagement, so. So let's, that's a good segue. Let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I was gonna ask what are some of the greatest successes with both flus, but I think there's a, a number of different things other than just this big one day festival. Tell us about the initiatives that fall under the brand itself and some of the things that are going on that really speak to the community. Yep, so um, just jumping right into our, our initiatives, we have the Bowflo Music and Arts Foundation, um, which provides music and arts uh, programming for inner city youth, uh, particularly ages five to 22. So uh, the focus behind that and the mission behind that was that, you know, I used to work within the education system and I seen, you know, from when I was a child in education system, how the music arts program slowly, you know, got taken out of the, the school systems. Uh, and that, you know, you still need that vessel. You still need that outlet because those two things um, deal directly with mental health, deal directly with, you know, physical health, deal directly with emotional um, well-being of youth. So when you're taking those out, that's an outlet for kids to be involved in. So we created programs uh, particularly around those those facets. Um, so with one of our poetry um, classes, like, you know, is having youth express themselves in a variety of different ways. Um, we, when we have our um, emotional intelligence, where we have the actual the silent disco headphones, youth are creating artwork and, and, and pieces based upon the vibrations of the music. Uh, and then we're going to be expanding those programs even more this coming year, um, virtually and in person. Um, and then we have our, 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 our scholarships, we have our paid internships, which is a partnership with Mayor Summer Youth. So we're getting youth involved in what we're doing overall with both flow, but also um, they're also working with the foundation as well too. Um, so one of our bigger <coughs> events is uh, the sneaker ball. <laughs> so the sneaker ball is uh, it's hopefully returning this year where we actually have a, a date and a, and a venue in, in place. Uh, well, let's tell people off. what the sneaker ball is real quick. Yeah, Sorry, so the, so the for sneaker ball folks who've never been. Just, yeah, so if you've never been to a sneaker ball, you're like, what the heck is a sneaker ball? So the sneaker ball is a charity gala. Uh, it's uh, a creative expression um, event where you will come in a tuxedo, a suit, a dress, a gown from head to ankle, but then your shoes and your footwear is actually a, a creative sneaker that could be either custom design, a retro, uh, something that matches, something that really just sticks out and, and has some type of art or creative expression um, that, that you wanna speak to. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really great that we have like these photo installations that happen and you know, we're raising money for the foundation and we have some performances. So I'm really, really excited about, you know, I'm you know, hoping that the, COVID restrictions start to lessen up some because I'm really, really excited about the venue that we have for this year. Uh, and it's going to happen in June. So, you know, we'll have more information that'll be coming out in, in the coming weeks and months. Awesome. The sneaker wild is a good time too. Yeah. Um, so Child and Family Services, obviously, um, we service both children and families here, adults too. Um, but of course, our primary focus is with children and families. Tell us a little bit about what children and families can expect at any of your events throughout the year, particularly the culminating event. What do you have in store for the, the kid-friendly stuff? So that, that's a great thing. So like over the years, like, you know, so the first year, you know, um, our real target market was, uh, as people call them, the millennials, right? Um, <laughs> and and that's, what was, that's who it was initially built for was because um, I'll be 33 next week. But, you know, when we started the event, I'm looking around, I'm like, there's really no events for my age generation. You know, we had, you know, we have a lot of music festivals, arts festivals, but it really speaks to, I would say the 40, 45 and older, really demographic. We kind of just going just because our parents gone, our grandparents gone. So we want to create this event that can not only be 
focus and, and new ideas and creative ideas and can grow with us um, over the years. Um, but then I started to see like, you know, my, my daughter and, 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 and your son was at the event and I'm like, they're having a good time. <laughs> and we, you know, we've seen grandparents come to the event. So then like the second year, then I started seeing, um, you know, more of our, more of our, I, I call them season, more of our season uh, <laughs> patrons. They start coming like, okay, they're coming out now. So, you know, we really started putting a real focus into making it uh, generational wide, you know, where, you know, the grandparents to infants coming out, you know, I think it was like our second year when uh, Benny was like, I seen people bring in their children, you know, with headphones and, and, and so forth like that. Then our third year, um, I'm seeing, you know, families bring out blankets and so forth. So uh, we started to create areas within a space where, you know, we have our, our we call it our family fun zone, where we have like the large size tic-tac-toes and the and, and the Jengas, and we're going to continue to expand that on um, this coming year um, with some art expression, with some um, other kid-friendly events. So uh, it continue to go, and, and it can also be keepsakes for the families to go. And we, we also try to do that, you know, we try to create like a, a family package on the, on the ticket so that people can, can enjoy that. So, you know, expect, you know, some art expression um, for families, uh, keep expecting more added to the family fund zone. We're gonna be announcing those things in, in the coming months uh, on, on what all the, uh, all is to come. Good, family fund zone, I like that. That's gonna be yeah. good. Um, so tell us, let's get to know you a little bit more. Tell us what inspires you most as a Buffalo influencer, a trailblazer, where, where do you get your inspiration? Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about, I'm thinking about that. So what inspires me is really just to continue to just to create you know, uh, one of my, you know, over the years of doing 15 years of, of events, I think one of the biggest pullbacks is people always walking away with two things, either a keepsake or a memory, right? Uh, and I believe that if people have memories um, from events, then the event will always like, you know, continue to have, have the nostalgic feeling. You know, I still have, you know, you know, when I was, you know, throwing parties and stuff like that, you know, 15 years ago, you know, I could post a picture up, I may do one tomorrow, I may post a picture up and people can draw back to that exact moment and say, oh, I remember when this happened, when this happened in the party and I remember that happened. So like, you wanna have that feeling where people can say, oh man, you know, and you start to see it over the, over years, five, like people are like, oh man, I remember when she performed and they did this and they did that. And you know, when mom said no came out in the suits and we ain't never seen nothing like that at a festival. And, and when Curtis started singing, the silo started like, so it's just like, you know, you have, so, so for me, it's like, you know, how can we continue to create um, memories for people and an enjoyable experience and, and an event for people to really look at, look for, um, that people can enjoy. So yeah. every year it's just about, okay, like what can we add in a meaningful way that, that continue to create memories and, and, and keepsakes for people? We love that. So obviously you have done a lot of great things in the community. Without a doubt, you serve as a role model to many folks, old and young. Um, tell us, who are some of your role models? Um, I don't really have too many, like, you know, like people get in, like, talking about, like, you know, celebrities, so forth. I don't really have those type of role models. I have a lot of great, um, I would say, father figures, manly figures that, that helped me, you know, build some sort of foundation um, for my father. Uh, Melvin Taylor, to my godfather, Al Ramey, to Ruben Johnson, to Norman Taylor, um, to Roland Sanders, to Roger Strother. Uh, and, and those men have just been tremendous uh, fam family men. Uh, they've all been about, you know, establishing a foundation for themselves and others um, and, making, and putting others first. Uh, so I, I would say those would, would, would truly be my, uh, my role models. That's awesome. Um, you mentioned kind of the legacy that they have left. Tell mm -hmm. us, you know, as we talk about you kind of making history right now, um, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind or what do you want to be remembered for um, specifically in Black history and that is Black History Month? Um, That's a great question. I, I, I don't think people, it's crazy. I don't think people actually think about that when they're doing stuff, uh, particularly like, I don't, you know, I don't think, you know, when you, when you talk about black history, I don't know if, you know, people like, you know, Martin Luther and Malcolm X and, and so forth thinking like, you know, what I'm gonna leave behind. So I don't, I don't, I never really sat back and really thought about it, but, you know, I know I would say from a legacy standpoint, 
uh, with having children, uh, I would say that, you know, that legacy is still on. So that it may be, you know, my daughter, she's 10. So, you know, it would be great that in, you know, eight to 10 years, she could take this on. And, and, and then in eight to 10 years, her sister could take this on, you know, and that continues um, that legacy and, and, and establish, a, you know, my last name, you know, is Taylor and, and they can continue to do, do their things and maybe they can be inspired from uh, some things that they see their father doing. And, you know, I, and, I, and I see it even now, you know, I have, you know, kids who, are, who play sports for me, have been a part of our programs and they come up to me, oh, Mr. Taylor, I want to do some things that you was doing. They started, you know, get into their own, their own lanes and, and industries and, and, and it's great to see. So whatever my legacy, legacy could be to, uh, I guess you could say to inspire, you know, really um, others, you know, to to, to, um, to create something good, you know. So I, I think that's 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 really it. I love it. Um, yeah. So to our audience, I'm going to ask Mr. Taylor one more question, but um, I see a couple comments and questions in the chat. If you want to prepare your questions, um, you can get ready because we're going to come to you in just a minute. But Lindsay, tell us what is next for you. What's next for you personally and professionally? What's next for you with both Louis? What do, what should we expect as you keep blazing trails and making history? Um. So with both per, 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 uh personally, um, I would say, you know, where we are, you know, we're still at, at the hands of you know of our current health health pandemic. But you know, once all that subsides, you know, we do want to get back to having our fifth and in, 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 uh, annual in-person event this coming summer, which, you know, is planned to be on Sunday, August 29th um, at a very historic venue, um, the Buffalo Central Terminal, which will be the first of its kind um, ever uh, since, since the inception of the Central Terminal. So that in itself um, is, is, is really something to, to, to do. Um, and then, you know, starting to launch our, our community programs. Um, we've been working with, you know, some partners. Um, we've been working with um, uh, some higher education uh, facilities and also some elected officials um, to get to doing uh, in-person and virtual festival, uh, in-person uh, programming for our, for our youth. So that should be launching um, hopefully by this spring, right before the kids get out of school. So we continue to do that and roll that back into the school time. Awesome. And then I was for me personally, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, just really focusing on, you know, continue to build this brand um, I'm involved in, you know, real estate. So uh, we have a really great uh, real estate development project that is coming up that, you know, kind of have under wraps, but that will probably uh, come about in the next month or so um, that will, you know, be in the residential and art space. So that's going to be really great uh, for the east side of Buffalo. Awesome. We are excited about it. So we're going to jump into some of the questions and comments that I'm seeing popping up in the chat. So everybody, if you... Um, Feel free to jump in and I'm gonna to try to get to everyone here. Um, you have a question, Lindsay, from TID Management. Um, he couldn't get to the website, but he wants to know how can he get in touch with you if he wants to become a sponsor for this event? Um, and I can type in your email address here if somebody's interested, I'll send that over. Yeah, so um, it's uh, bowflowmusicarts at gmail.com. Um, that's direct. Um, to us um, that comes to my phone comes to our sponsorship coordinators phone um, so uh, we would love to have any and all sponsors who, who want to be a part of this um, and we can curate uh, any type of sponsorship package if it's directed particularly towards our community initiatives or the festival or both awesome um all right. So Don said it's a great idea to showcase multiple music genres it broadens the appeal and impact of the event Absolutely. And Don, when I tell you there's every kind of <laughs> genre of music and art, uh, he covers yeah. all bases. That, that's, that's, a huge, that's a huge focus, um, you know, because when you look across the landscape, particularly, <laughs> I would say like in this area, but other areas as well, too, is like, you know, you have a certain genre of music. I would say even national. You have a certain genre of, of music. There's very few festivals that include everybody. It's either EDM, it's country, it's rock and roll, it's hip hop. It's jazz or R and B. It's all just one sector of music. It's nobody really trying to blend it. And every point in, now and then you do get a blend of it. Um, like one of my favorite festivals to go to is the Roots Picnic. That's like you know, even though it's you know, little you know, whatever. But it's it's great. It's great. Um, yeah, it's great. I mean, you mentioned um, music and arts being a necessity for 
mental health and other things like that. Um, but one really uh, cool thing about music and arts and Bo Blue is successful at doing this, um, it really brings people together, right? Regardless of what your preferred genre of music or art is, this festival is an opportunity for Western New Yorkers to unite. And it really is just a feel good day. Um, and all the events are, are really feel good events. Um, Deb asked a question. She says, how is the pandemic impacting your events and business? And do you ever provide any virtual events? Yes, so <clears throat> I'll start by saying the, the virtual uh, aspect. So this past uh, summer, um, as many other events were affected by um, COVID-19, uh, COVID-19, a pandemic. Uh, so even I would say up until about like July, we were trying to, you know, uh, modify the event to still try to have it in person. And then it just, you know, we just wanted to be safe with it. So we did a completely virtual um, festival um, with some live and uh, pre-recorded virtual um, content um, that was posted. Um, we had, you know, great showing of that. Um, in, in regards to um, future, yes, we actually are, uh, we'll be having some uh, virtual live and pre-recorded content that will be uh, launching um, this coming spring um, and going throughout the rest of the year. So um, if you guys want to follow us on our IG at, at Both Flow Music Arts uh, or on our um, Facebook page, those are our most like updated along with the website, but you know, those are like, you know, to the day always, um, and in regards to the event planning, you know, it's um, it just it just puts you like in a, in, in in a holding period. So uh, what uh, our team has been doing is just you know we've been planning as if the festival is going to happen in the summertime, getting everything prepared, um, everything ready to go, and then um, once we get the green light from the city and the state that we can have, you know, this amount of people, we can have a, a full live event. We're gonna launch it. Everything's being being ready to roll out. Um, but you know, we are. You know, I think uh, how you know events will start to move will be uh, of a hybrid model. So you're gonna have events where you're gonna have people, um, you know, doing in person with a mix of virtual content, pre-recorded and virtual. Um, and I think you know maybe that may very well be what this summer looks like uh, with a limited capacity, with you know some live virtual and pre-recorded content. Right. So if it is a hybrid situation with limited tickets, you definitely don't want to sleep. Oh, you don't want to miss out. <laughs> you don't want to miss out. Um, I see Miss Joyce um, typed in a question. I don't see the whole question though. So Miss Joyce, if you want to um, send that again, we have a comment from Mrs. Collins and she says, you have a great role model in your dad, Melvin Taylor, who we worked with in school and community and church, and you're now representing as a role model yourself to your children and others. Thank you for paying it forward. And I think Thank that's you. such an awesome comment. That is why we have him here today. Um, certainly making history. Um, so thank you for, for that comment. He is definitely a gem for our community. Um, I see someone with the last name, DeLuca. I, DeLuca, I'm not sure who that is. You raised your hand, but feel free to shoot a message in the comment. I don't want to miss you. Um, Miss Joyce wants to know, do you do workshops with high school kids? Yes. Um... I should have had that piece. I have, I have a piece over there. We actually <clears throat> did uh, workshops with um, Bennett High School. Um, that was one of our first workshops when we first launched it. Um, we actually did our emotional intelligence program with them. Uh, and that was during their Saturday Academy in partnership with Breaking Barriers. So, yeah. Breaking Barriers. And if <laughs> someone, is, if we have other folks in education and they're interested in having you do high school yeah. workshops, how, how, how do the folks get in touch with you on Make yeah. sure so you can just you, you can reach out to us um, via that email as well too that, that you have in the chat. Um, you can reach out to us and you know, I would love to have a conversation with you and see how we can do that. We really are uh, excited about getting back into this year. So we could do a virtual workshop. We can do an uh, in-person uh, workshop. Um, we could do spring, summer. You know, We've done things in the spring with Salvation Army um, and also the medical corridor. So we can, we can make it work, yep. And just so I make sure I have this right in the chat, it's both music arts at gmail.com. Yep. Okay. 
All right. So folks, I put that um, email address if you want to get in touch with Lindsay directly for potential youth programming. Um, if there's any other questions, we do have a few more minutes. Feel free to throw them in there. Lindsay, while we prepare to close out, what else? Did I miss anything? Anything else you want the people to know? Can we cover no. it all? <laughs> <laughs> no, just just uh, continue to stay, stay in touch with us. Um, we will be having some things <clears throat> come out in, 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 in the coming weeks and months, um, whether it be announcing our festival to our community programmings to what we all have coming up. Um, if you want to get involved with any type of partnerships with our community initiatives um, or the festival, uh, please feel free to reach out. I'd love to have a conversation with you uh, because to us, you know, we are 365, seven days a week. Um, so it doesn't have to be immediate, but it can even be in the fall of next year or, or the winter of next year. So uh, please feel free to reach out. It, it takes all of us to really just make this thing really work. So I'm, I'm excited. Great. Yep. Thank you so much. We It was an honor having this conversation with you. And like I said, both is one of my favorite events of the year. So I'm delighted to share this with our child and family services family and Fox school family. Listen, guys, it's Black History Month. Um, Black history is everybody's history. So make sure you continue to have conversations with your children and your family. I hope that you can join us next week on February 17th. On Wednesday, February 17th, next week's speaker, we're going to stay here with the present. We have Jamil Cruz, who is the president and founder of Cruise Control Media. He's also the digital communications manager for Say Yes Buffalo, one of our partnering organizations. So this is going to be another really cool conversation you don't want to miss. Jamil is also doing great things here in our city. So I hope that you can join us, tell your friends, share it on your social media. Lindsay, thank you so much. It was thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. It was really you. enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Remember, Black history is everybody's history.